The Dublin Literary Awards have recently announced their long list, and unlike other awards, which take their nominations from publishers or authors, this prize takes their nominations from libraries around the world. And, I mean, who doesn't recommend better books than librarians? Hopefully booktubers, and that's why you're watching. Dublin Literary Awards is run by Dublin City Libraries, and this year 80 libraries from around the world have nominated 70 books from 35 different countries, and those 70 books form the long list. And it's a real Really international award too. If you go to the website, you can see a list of libraries that have contributed to this award either this year or in the past. There are 195 libraries listed and I had a quick browse and there are libraries from Colombia, Nigeria, Bulgaria, Barbados, Sri Lanka, Korea, Poland, Brazil, Egypt, Liechtenstein, Iceland, Iraq and Slovenia to name a few places. I need to give a little bit of credit to a wonderful booktuber for this video. I have been wanting to make a video about the Dublin Literary Awards, but I didn't know how to tackle 70 books on the long list. Then I saw Eric Carl Anderson's video where he discussed this award, where he simply named all 70 books and selected a few books that caught his attention to highlight. Now, if you haven't seen Eric's video yet, I will link it in the show notes. Very much worthwhile checking out his video after this, we are not covering the same books in our videos. I'm going to discuss 11 books that caught my attention. I'm avoiding all the big names, and that's just because I want to discuss books that I haven't discussed on this channel yet. Um, I'm going to put all 70 books in the show notes. Let's go through them. Crimson Spring by Navtej Sana. I really like the cover, the birds of prey circling the sun that is dripping blood. That really stood out to me. This is a book about the 1919 Jallianwala Bagh massacre in Amritsar, India, in which armed English troops fired upon unarmed Indian people, killing hundreds and injuring many more. The event led to Gandhi organising the non-cooperation movement, the first large-scale non-violent protest. I really enjoy books set in India. So much of that country is fascinating, from the culture to the people to the history. I also love historical fictions about events that I don't know very much about at all. And I love miserable and horrible books, so this this one's got three big ticks for me. Feast by Emily O'Grady. This is a book that has been on my radar to read, hopefully before the Australian Book Award season began. It's about Neve, a 17-year-old Australian girl who decides to move in with her eccentric father Patrick and her stepmother Alison in Scotland for a year abroad. The three form a loving if dysfunctional family unit. On her 18th birthday, Patrick throws Neve an 18th birthday party. Against Neve's wishes, her mum Shannon arrives with a hidden agenda. I've read a few reviews of this book and it was compared to the cult Aussie movie Don's Party, which may not be so well known by younger Aussies as well as international people. There's also mentions of a sense of horror building under the surface and that cover has a tragic mystery feel to it. Colour me intrigued. Water Break by Marieke Shermer, translated from Dutch by Liz Waters. A woman who seems to have it all is unable to tell her husband of her violent secret past, which threatens to tear her family apart. The struggle to share trauma with loved ones and the impact that has on relationships. That is book catnip to me. Also, I really don't hate a short translated fiction that has an ebook available on Scribd or Everand or whatever people are calling it at the moment. Human Nature by Serge John Corr, translated from French by Louise Rogers Lalaurie. Set in the 70s, 80s and 90s in rural France, after his three sisters leave, Alexander is left to run his family's cattle farm. Alexander struggles to balance the principles and his livelihood as both supermarkets and fast food chains chains push him for more produce and more faster. Alexander finds himself drawn to a beautiful environmental activist. An activist who may be more interested in putting the ammonia nitrate he uses on his farm to other uses. One of my interests is in the ethics of the food we eat and this one sounds very fascinating. My Father's House by Joseph O'Connor. September 
1943, German forces occupy Rome. SS officer Paul Hauptmann rules with terror. But inside Rome, the Vatican is officially neutral. And Irish priest Hugh O'Flattery dedicates himself to helping people trying to escape the Nazis, based on a true story. And it's not the first time I've seen this book on a prize list either. I think with so many quality Irish novels doing the rounds in the last 12 months, this one has just missed out on some of the hype that other novels have got. My Men by Victoria Kierland, translated from Norwegian by Damien Searles. I love this cover. It's proper chilling, isn't it? It's about Belle Gunness, a Norwegian maid turned Midwestern farmer's wife who became the first female serial killer in US history. It is a radical, empathetic tale about a woman who is capable of both great kindness and great cruelty, and how her growing alienation contributed to her ruthless attitude. This sounds like such an interesting twist on Nordic noir, blending it with true crime and psychological thriller. As somebody who has never murdered or killed anybody, even when they deserved it, I think the question, what drives some people to kill, is really interesting and I look forward to reading a book about that. Now I am here by Chidi Eber, about to make his last stand, a soldier facing certain death at the hands of enemies, writes home to his loved ones to explain how he ended up there. Out for a walk one day, he stumbled upon a group of officers enjoying a barbecue who invited him to join them. From there, this gentleman is slowly transformed into a war criminal. When we look at some of history's most horrible acts. Things like the Holocaust, the Rwandan Civil War, the breakup of Yugoslavia and so on. Some of the things people did in those situations were truly terrible. They were people just like you and me. And I've always wondered, how would I have acted if I was under the same pressures they were, if I was in the same circumstances? I like to think that I wouldn't do anything bad, but I'm sure we all do. And some people clearly do crack. And how does that happen? What turns a gentle person into a monster? Such an interesting question, one which I imagine will have horrible answers in this novel. Orgy by Gabor Zoltan, translated from Hungarian by Thomas Sneddon. This just sounds horrific. Set in Budapest in late 1944 and early 1945, a fascist organisation, the Arrows Cross, seeks out Jews, liberals, English sympathisers and humanists. One man, Renner, fits one of those characters. He's a fearless owner of a factory, and he is captured by the Arrow's Cross. They decide, instead of a swift execution, they will torture him and force him to assist them. This sounds terrifying and dark. Schmutz by Felicia Berliner. This is a weird one, but weird in an engaging and curious way. A young Hasidic woman fears she will never find a husband due to her addiction to pornography. She expects to find her husband through arranged marriage. Armed with a secret computer to help her through her online college degree, she must balance the discovery of her sexuality with the expectations of the family she loves. This is not the setting I imagine when I read the words porn addiction. So even the description of this book is subverting my expectations of the world and teaching me about my own bias. There is so much potential in this novel already. Stolen by Anne Helen Leostardus, translated from Swedish by Rachel Wilson Broyles. Nine-year-old Elsa and her family are Sammies living in the Arctic Circle. One day she witnesses a man brutally killing her reindeer calf. She knows who the man is, but she refuses to tell anybody, least of all the Swedish police. Now 19, Elsa is confronted by the same man, and something inside her breaks, and the guilt and fear and anger that she's been holding inside of her comes crashing out. Distrust of the police, trauma, confronting an abuser, an indigenous culture, all wrapped together in one novel? Yes, please. The Fire by Daniela Kruder, translated from German by Jamie Bullock. After a fire burns down their holiday cabin, Rahel and Peter find themselves isolated unexpectedly on a farm where Rahel spent her childhood summer. Three weeks with no escape from each other, free from years of demanding children, career ambitions and the monotony of their daily existence. The couple must come to an understanding on if they have a future together. What happens when love 
love grows old and passion fades, when what divides us is greater than what brought us together in the first place, and how easy is it to ask the fundamental questions about our relationship? This sounds very emotional. On May 26th, a short list of up to 10 books will be announced, and on May 23rd, the winner will be announced. Let me know if you've had a look at the 70 books long listed, and they're in the show notes, remember, are there any that you're interested in, or are there any that you've read and particularly recommend? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you really like this video, please consider joining my Patreon. I really value and appreciate the support of my wonderful Patreons. And there's every possibility that we might read some of the books on this list together. Bye bye.